Tonight, another secret visit for a potential Arium buyer is a deal close to being done. And a tennis legend on the court in Port Augusta. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening. Korean steel manufacturer POSCO has made a last visit to Arium's whaler operations ahead of a final decision on the future of the steelworks. It comes as a stoush between the state government and the member for Grey broke out today over support for the steelworks. Our reporter John Hunt has the details. With just weeks left until Arium gets a new owner, the final due diligence is being undertaken by Liberty House and POSCO. Korean firm POSCO has made one last visit to Mwala for a final inspection, with key executives flying into the city last night. Keen to put their best foot forward, senior members of the company are here to run their eye over the plant. It's also believed they met with key members of Arium's team, along with Wireless City Council senior management. POSCO has shown interest since mid-last year and were an early favourite to become the owner and operator. They face stiff competition, with Liberty House, led by Sanjeev Gupta, also in hot pursuit of the steelworks and export business in the southern middle back ranges. Both Arium and Cordamenta declined to comment on the visits. On the political front, it's been anything but pleasant, with a war of words breaking out between the state Labour government and the Liberal federal member for Wyala. Jay Weatherall and Eddie Hughes this week criticised the Commonwealth for not setting aside funds for the wireless steelworks in the budget. Treasurer Tom Kutzentonis then took to Twitter, questioning whether Mr Ramsey had done enough in the party room. An irate Mr Ramsey says Labour is playing politics, when the two should actually be united. And they know this is really counterproductive stuff to do. Um, what we need to present to the foreign investors is a united front. Mr Ramsey also says the state government shouldn't be criticising federal actions, considering their $50 million in support still sits in the bank. Has clothed themselves in the fact that they put $50 million on the table that no one else has been able to access $1. It just sits there going mouldy. It's expected a new owner will be announced in early June, with a final sign-over by June 30. Until then, Wireless sits and waits to find out what its future will look like. John Hunt reporting there. Southern Cross has been given a first-hand look at the refurbishment of Broken Hills Civic Centre. While there have been some unexpected delays in the renovation, Council says the work has been well worth the wait. Money, Council says, is well spent. Very exciting. It's uh, been a long time coming. We've had a few setbacks along the way, which uh, yeah, is natural in a building of, of this size and this age and the, the scalability of the project. And they've spared no expense. Slate bar settings, top shelf kitchen facilities and brass handrails are some of the flash new features, part of the $5.1 million refurbishment. We've spent $700,000 on uh, technology essentially, smart technology and AV audio visual technology throughout the centre. Despite some setbacks in the renovation and some final invoices to come, the project is said to be on budget. At this point in time, everything's pointing towards us being on budget and uh, it's been one of those jobs that, um, you know, given the age of the building, we're talking a 40-year-plus age building, that uh, it's not until you start to pull down ceilings and pull down walls and get into air conditioning uh, areas and those sorts of things that you start to find out what some of the problems are. Although the Civic Centre's renovation has only just been completed, it'll hit the ground running. The tables are already set here for tonight's Civic Centre Bowl and next week it'll be the New South Wales Nationals Party Conference. And the whole idea of the renovation of the Civic Centre was that it was about really trying to capture that conference market. So again, when we talk about the National Parties ha having their conference here, that, that really fits that bill. But it was about trying to ca uh, capture that conference market and, uh, and give the city a, an area where that they could be really proud of. Patrick Roenke, Southern Cross News. Stage one of the CBD project in Port Pirie is finally coming to an end. The council wants to celebrate with a street party, but some businesses aren't persuaded on the idea. Hard at work, contractors are frantically moving to get the project finished before the end of the month. Uh, today we'll, 
we've seen some targo down uh, in Alexander Street, and that will be open on the weekend. So it'll be back to traffic on that. Over the last four months, businesses have felt the sting of the upgrade, but the council wants to add some spark once the project is finished. We want to have a, a massive party to bring people into the CBD and to get them back into the businesses that, are, that have felt the pain over the last couple of months. Some businesses aren't so convinced and just want to get back to normal trading. We've had some mixed reaction. We're looking at getting all the traders together, really working out what best time suits them, what time of the day suits them. The upgrade has put a strain on the businesses here on Alexander Street. And for the traders, the completion of the project couldn't come quick enough. The council says they're working towards getting the businesses back on their feet. So reducing their rates isn't on the cards? Uh, at this stage, we're looking at other means to actually get more people in the shops. That is a key issue, that we need to get people actually shopping in them. Uh, no amount of subsidies can compensate for that. Kaziah Sullivan, Southern Cross News. Port Augusta Council has received a show of solidarity from the Civil Contractors Federation over its troubled Joybaluk Bridge. The Federation says it's in talks with the Council and the State Government about duplicating the bridge and is alarmed that no action has yet been taken. With speeds reduced to 25 kilometres an hour, then brought back up to 40, and a narrow walkway within centimetres of traffic, Port Augusta's Joy Baluk Bridge is a concerning link in Australia's national highway. Now the Civil Contractors Federation has expressed their solidarity with the Port Augusta City Council's push for action. And what we've got here is a bridge that is really no longer fit for purpose. It's getting old. It was built to service an entirely different economy. It's too small and it can't cope with the volumes of traffic in terms of the weight and size of vehicles. Mayor Sam Johnson says as soon as the Great Western Bridge closed in March, Council gathered support. One of the things we decided to capitalise on straight away was getting support outside of Port Augusta and industry support, not necessarily for the actual the Great Western Bridge, but actually for a project which the State Government identified in 2011, which is the duplication of the Joy Baloo Bridge. The Federation CEO says that in the scale of a federal budget, $250 million for Port Augusta's share of the National Highway Network is a drop in the ocean. Uh, and we're engaging with the State Infrastructure Minister Mulligan and we're hoping to make a joint uh, representation uh, to the Federal Infrastructure Minister in Canberra and just absolutely put the case in very strong terms. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, a big expansion for a popular Port Lincoln lunch spot. The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. The popular Rogue and Rascal Cafe on the Port Lincoln foreshore has been granted an extension by the City Council. The extension will include another level, including a balcony and a new room to expand the already busy cafe shop. The Rogue and Rascal was taking their cafe to another level. So we have the capacity to bring a new kind of nighttime trade to life, uh, to interact with lots of different arts communities that this building is so well renowned for. Owners Gemma and Eloise have been given the nod to develop their popular lunchtime business to the dormant space directly above. We expand from you know a breakfast and lunch um, and a little bit of that live music on Friday nights to um, a really upmarket bar, cocktail and uh, shared plates offering for the night time. The Port Lincoln Council signing off on the development until at least 2020. To see an expansion now going ahead and, and taking advantage of the upstairs area that is just a spectacular view, take my hat off to the girls, they're doing a great job. Residents giving high praise to the girls' vision. It's going to really bring a whole other yeah, level, literally, to their business and, and the community and the sort of functions and services that they can provide. The cafe has been part of the Civic Hall building for nearly three years. The building itself dates back to the 1800s. The girls eager to breathe new life back into the historic space. We hope to really honour the heritage that this building has but certainly we do also hope to bring a new sense of vibrancy with what we're doing here in the hospitality scene. And I really think that the next five years of people trying stuff out in Port Lincoln is going to dictate the future of the next 20 years, which is a really exciting time. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. 
An online safety session will be held in Port Perry next Monday night to educate parents on cyber dangers. Port Perry Police will hold the information night at the Port Sporting Club from 7.30. Police will explore various social media apps and how to keep an eye on children's privacy. Police say it's vital that parents know the dangers which lurk online and also how to monitor what your children are doing online so you can parent them and make sure that they are not only staying safe but also using it appropriately themselves. Port Lincoln's West Coast Youth is establishing a drug action plan in the wake of South Australia's spiralling drug addiction. Community groups and government organisations are pulling together in the hopes of combating the stranglehold that ICE is having on regional towns. South Australia has an addiction with drugs and it's not confined to the big city. Port Lincoln is seeing an increase in drug misuse as well as alcohol misuse, much like other communities. I think that we do need to really have a look at what we can do to stem the flow. We also need to have a look at how we can provide support services. Current data shows ice use has increased 25% in the past year and has no signs of slowing down. It's rampant increase prompting immediate action. A methamphetamine is increasing and that in fact and unfortunately South Australia has the highest per capita rate of usage and regional communities are harder impacted. So we need to be proactive but we also need to look at what evidence and best practice there is around support for this type of drug and also not forget that alcohol is still a huge issue in this community. The Community Drug Action Group is taking the first steps towards winning the war on drugs. Looking at how we can support each other better in our region and be aware of the issues that are going on. Not to target and isolate those people but rather to support so they can come back and have a full recovery because recovery absolutely is possible from addiction. West Coast Youth is urging locals to have their say and help fight the battle against the addictive scourge on society. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. When we return after the break, a tennis legend hits the court in Port Augusta. We'll head along next. <laughs> Welcome back. Wyala's MFS unit is the proud owner of a new million dollar fire truck which will improve the services available. The new truck includes a 20 metre aerial crane which was put to use during a mock exercise this morning. This new fire truck costs $1.3 million, but its benefit to the Wyla community will be priceless. With training completed, Wyla firefighters are now able to use it on callouts, with the new appliances at the forefront of firefighting technology. It's uh, a aerial appliance with pumping capacity. It's got a uh, range of 20 metres and a pump. Local emergency service personnel demonstrated its capabilities in a mock drill today, retrieving a patient from the top of HMAS Wyler. Commander Trezai says the new vehicle will boost the MFS's abilities to control a number of different fire situations. Fires from heights over industry. It can be used also for rescue at heights and also rescue from drains. And while it's early days, he says the new truck has been a hit with the station members. They absolutely love it. It's a fantastic piece of equipment and uh, they are so excited to have this uh, in their uh, fleet. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Well, former number one tennis player Yvonne Gulagong Corley was in Port Augusta today holding a tennis come and try day for Indigenous school kids. Her foundation selects tennis hopefuls from right around the world and she uses the program to encourage children to eat well, exercise and to stay in school. Using wood from an apple crate, Yvonne started by playing tennis against a wall. Now the tennis legend has her own foundation, today helping Indigenous kids from Port Augusta schools to have the same chance. Probably doing what the townspeople did for me years ago, but on a national level. <laughs> and, um, and it's working, and I just love every minute of it. And now Yvonne is doing the same. She says she uses her program to close health and education gaps for Indigenous kids. Health is not the greatest either, so we're trying to close that gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous non people. And so basically I'm using tennis as a vehicle to create better education and health, and it's working. How they're teaching us all these kind of moves that I had no idea, um, like how you go high five, forward hand and back backward hand. 
there's different um, strategies to do it. We get to like have fun and do activities. The foundation's head coach Anzac was one of Yvonne's recruits. And, and you know, I pass on the same same similar message. It's it's great just seeing the, the these kids believing in themselves and, and having hope. So, and I honestly believe that if they stay in school, maybe they'll find their dreams too. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Port Augusta's Wharflands Plaza will host up to 5,000 people at the Port Augusta Motor Show tomorrow. This year's show has been months in the making, attracting the likes of V8 supercar racer Chas Mostard and extreme trials rider Adrian Harry. The event runs every second year, attracting visitors and motoring enthusiasts from around the region, even some from interstate. Gates open at 10 a.m. with online entries for cars still open until midnight tonight. So the boats will be racing three times during the day. Adrian Harry will be performing three times during the day. So whether you come in the morning, the afternoon or lunchtime, you will see everything we have on offer at the show. Well, time to preview the weekend's footy with this week's footy tips. Hello and welcome to another round of SGL football. This Saturday in Port Augusta at Central, take it on West. West have started this season in fine fashion and will be looking to continue their early season form. Central are yet to register a win and will find it tough against West. I'm tipping West. In Perry on Saturday, it's Port and South set the clash with both sides on one win apiece. Reigning Premier South had a convincing win over Central last week and will start this match as favourites. I'm tipping South. On Sunday in Perry, it's Sully's up against the Lions. Lions have had a poor start to the season and will be looking to bounce back this week. Sully's have started their year with two wins and find themselves in good early season form. This should be the match of the round. I'm tipping Sully's. Pretty good game here. West Weiler versus South Weiler. South going OK. The 1-1 one, one, lost one, but they are coming up against the top team in West. They're yet to lose a game, and whilst it should be close, the Dragons will win. Saturday's game at Memorial Oval at Central Weiler versus Rapina. Ruse on the bottom of that are no wins, and although Centrals did lose last week to top team West, they played some good opposition. They were in the, ga in the game for most of it, and I think the Roosters will be too strong. And finally, on Sunday at Bennett Oval, Runa Bay versus North Wyala. Bay's doing a lot better than we thought they would at the start of the year. They could have been two and zip. They only just lost last week narrowly, but they take on a North team, which I think have got a bit of extra quality. They've got some premiership players there, and the Magpies to win. Welcome to Port Lincoln Footy Tips. We kick off round three at Centenary Oval where Boston's are taking on Lincoln South. Lincoln South had a huge win last week against Waybacks and I'm tipping them to win this one comfortably. In the next game, we see Waybacks heading down to Ravendale to take on Tasman's. Both teams had huge losses last week. However, I'm impressed with Tasman's young guns and I think they're going to run away in the last quarter and win this one by a few goals. In the last game, a match of the round, we see Marble Range heading down to take on Mallee Park. Both teams are playing intense and a good brand of footy. However, you have to tip Mallee Park at home. They're going to win this one by four goals. This week in Broken Hill Football, see Central take on West. Last time these two met, Central ran over the top of them. West are still looking for their first win, but have had some really bad things happen to them this year, and they've had some bad injuries. They'll be looking for a win, but I think it'll be the Magpies by 20 to 30 points. The second game, North taking on South. This looks like to be the grand final game of the year. It'll be a sensational game. South never give up. North have some really talented players in the centre, but I think it'll be South that'll win by an easy 30 to 40 points. Well, stay with us after the break. A look at how the weekend weather is shaping up. Welcome back. Turning to the weather now, but first tonight's weather photo is snapped by Aaron Potter out near Gladstone. Beautiful light over the landscape there. If you have a weather photo to share, you can email it into us. A sunny end to the week this Friday, 23 for Port Augusta with 21 in Wyala and Port Lincoln. Port Perry, 22 degrees. Broken Hill, a bit cloudy on 21. On the national satellite image, the clear conditions set to hang around over the weekend, though cloud pushing in from the bite will see a change into next week. Out on the waters, the winds to 15 knots to the east, the seas to Meter and southerly sunrise to start to 7 o'clock. So looking good to kick off the weekend. 23 for Port Augusta and 21 in Wyala and Port Lincoln. Port Perry and Broken Hill both on at 22 degrees. And staying fine into Sunday, 22 for Port Lincoln, 23 in Cleve and 25 in Woodner. Wyala and Kadena both on 22 to wrap up the weekend. Port Augusta looking fine on 24. Port Perry 23 degrees for your Sunday, 20 in Clare and 22 over in the Silver City. Fine also on Monday for most parts ahead of some wet weather into next week.
And that is the local news for this Friday evening and for the week. Don't forget, as always, you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you back here on Monday night. I'm Tim Hatfield from the team here at Southern Cross. Enjoy your evening. Have a great weekend as well. Good night. Thank you.